Renault, we have a problem. Look at what you used to build. All these amazing cars, and yet now we have a lineup of hybrid crossovers and mainstream electric cars, and no more rallying. Back in the 80s, Renaults were feared on rally stages across Europe, particularly if they were being driven by Jean Ragnotti, who scored outright WRC wins in his rear-drive Renault even in the Group B era. OK, they were on the tight tarmac stages of Monte Carlo and Corsica that suited the nimble short wheelbase 5, but all the same, Renault had racing pedigree. And that seems to have been abandoned in the electric era. However, there is a reason I'm at Magnicor Racetrack, surrounded by a bunch of old Renault 5s. And that's that Renault is bringing back the 5 as an all-electric production car. It should go on sale next year. It'll be around £20,000 and have about 130 horsepower. Look, it'll be cool and desirable in the same way that a Fiat 500e is cool and desirable, but it's not quite what we're after, is it? Where's the next wide-bodied, mega-arched hyperhatch? Oh, look, there it is. It's called the Renault 5 Turbo 3E, and it's, well, an entirely successful updating of all those old wide-arch rally cars. It's all electric, with twin motors, one for each rear wheel, delivering 375 horsepower and 516 pounds foot of torque. It weighs about 1,500 kilos, of which the battery is about a third, and has a donut mode. It also has an impressive 50 degrees of steering lock. Now, if you've read the same way into that spec sheet that I have, you'll have come to a similar conclusion. Renault has basically built a drift car, so they've said that on no account can I drift it. Isn't that right, Ivan? Nope. So, ladies and gentlemen, I should introduce my co-driver, my co-pilot over here, is Ivan Muller. Ivan Muller, world touring car champion four times? Yeah. BTCC times. champion once? Yeah. How many Andros Ice trophies? Uh, ten. Ten? Yeah, ten you like, So you like sliding around on ice quite a bit. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's quite noisy in here when it's up and running, isn't it? And it's sort of quick, but it's not that fast. It's just quite manageable. It's remarkably communicative actually, I've got good steering feel from it. It's, it's not like most electric cars I've driven. There's a little bit of body roll so you know where you are with that. It's quite, it's quite interesting, it's quite engaging. But it feels nice through corners, I'm quite impressed with this. Especially considering it's a concept car, I really want Renault to build this, it feels quite engaging. Noisy mind you really quite loud in here. I just want to pull the handbrake lever. Can I have a little? <laughs> well, look, okay, if I can't have a go, I think we're going to have to say that you have a go and show me what it can do then. Being an electric racing car, obviously the Turbo 3E needs to come in and go on charge because the battery doesn't last very long when you're tearing around, especially if Ivan Muller is driving. Now it's built around a steel space frame construction, all done to FIA standards and carbon body panels. And someone's had quite a lot of fun with the livery. In fact, they've had quite a lot of fun with the whole car. Only a team of 20 did this from sketch to what you see here in eight months. It's quite a bit of work, I reckon. And they've had some fun along the way, as I was saying. Look, 
got GoPros for headlights. In fact, there's like 10 GoPro mounts all the way around the car, so you can document yourself sliding around, hopefully. And you've got an LED light strip here. And the idea of this is it's meant to stay still. The light's meant to stay still when you're drifting or something, but they haven't quite got it to work exactly as they want yet. And look, wheel spats make everything better, don't they? I bet they're not functional, but who cares really? And look at the rest of it. Look at the sense of style and proportion this thing's got. The wheel arches are bananas in a brilliant way. These old M plates, they've just put those on so they can get the 50 logo because the Renault 5 is 50. The rest of the rear wing comes from a GT3 car and round the back, just the width of it, it's two meters wide and only about four long. It's bonkers, right. You go and have a look in that side. I'm going to go around here. Right, the interior and straight away, it's actually quite noisy in here because of all the fans going while it's on charge. It's also not very big, at least in part because of these giant but very hip hugging racing seats. Really nice little retro touch in here though. The original Renault 5 Turbo is renowned for this bonkers interior design, which had all these sort of square bits and edges. So they've redone it for this one with these square blocks of information instead of the dials. As a driving position though, well, you can't argue with a slim rimmed, really grippy steering wheel and a hydraulic handbrake. That's just excellent. But we better address the elephant in the room or rather the teddy bear in the footwell. Again, this is just the design team having fun. They worked out they needed some padding on the frame to stop you hurting your knees when you were cornering and sky skidding around. So what they did is they went down a jumble sale and they bought a bear. Strapping a teddy bear in the footwell as a knee pad come mid-drift emotional support animal injects a bit of humour into the Turbo 3E. But let's look at the bigger picture. What life will this car lead? Luca De Meo, Renault's CEO, challenged the FIA to make a change to rallying regulations to allow the turbo to compete. Predictable line, nice angle back to the historics, but it'll never happen. Like other electric cars, the Ford Mach-E 1400 springs to mind. I suspect it'll find a brief firework life doing drifty demos, one lap challenges, hill climbs, or perhaps as a nod to climate change sensitivities, Ivan will take it ice racing. But here's the bigger question, one that circles us back to where we started. Is this the electric future of Renault Sport? Now, I can't see them creating a road going 400 horsepower rear drive drift machine. But just look at the stance and attitude of this thing. Imagine it on the road. What it tells me is that Renault is serious about the hot hatch, and we've got to be happy about that. Fair play, Renault, you've done a cracking job so far. Don't let us down.